This is Oscar Bevis for the Stomping Ground, powered by Wow Hydrate and available on the zone, Nissa Sowland. Sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Have you done an interview on the Stomping Ground yet? I think we might have just had. I don't a few know. I'm not sure. You probably had my brother. Obviously, he's a, he's a, he loves talking. Um, I don't know if you've had me yet. You haven't had the. Uh, you haven't paid the fees yet. You know. Now you finally brought that big briefcase of cash. I'm going to talk. I want to talk. You can see this is more of an exclusive interview. I like to be a bit more exclusive. You know. Now the cash is there, you're ready to talk and exactly. open the box. Exactly. I've got to say, exactly. in terms of interviews, obviously, like you said, Kala does like to do his bit. And I guess with Misfits and all the drama, he is more regularly on camera. Um, do you prefer taking a bit more of a backseat when it comes to, to interviews? Honestly, I really don't mind either way. I'm happy to do interviews. Um, I'm happy not to do interviews. I don't have to jump on a camera and scream and shout but I'm also happy to do that um I think my brother's got a real natural knack of doing it you know he's a he's an entertainer in that in that respect um you know I'm sure I'll have a few comments at the bottom of uh the stomping ground uh YouTube channel saying oh what f fucking bore be quiet can I swear you can ah okay okay that's good Hopefully my kids won't watch this. Then. I was going to say we'll get that in a minute in just to. Although they're kind of used to they they're kind of used to the swearing, so it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, just an insight into home life with Nissa. Oh Allen. fuck me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you flew here at five thirty this morning. Um, why so early, man? Well, I had Shit to, to be here. I had to be here for the. Well, that was it was kind of the only flight. It wasn't a private uh, private plane, mate. Um, it was uh, no, it was the only flight. BA, 7.25 a.m. from Heathrow, so it's just easier than getting the train for me. I live in West London, so it's, you know, it's half an hour to the airport. Easy, easy, easy job. Had a little disco nap now, recharged myself. I'm ready for you. Shout out West London. Yeah, West, West, West is best. Although you know. I'm kind of Northwest sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. West or West slash North, Labrick Grove. You know. Wherever it is, West is best. Yeah, you know West that. is best. Yeah, you're West London, aren't you? But I'm also North London. I'm Tottenham, you know. I love Tottenham. Well, I don't, yeah. yeah I, how did it I, end I up love, I love the team. Listen, growing up in North London, you you had to either support Arsenal or Tottenham. Um, I picked Tottenham uh, because after going to an Arsenal game, I think it was in 1989, it was my first ever game, I went to watch Arsenal. They won 1 0. Last minute penalty. It was when they used to play really awful, boring football, long ball, boring, boring. Arsenal was where it came from. Yeah, that those at those days, and um, <clears throat> I remember my dad, who always loved Tottenham, said to me, "Come on, come on, son, you cannot, you cannot support this shit." It talks like Arnie, um, and I said, uh, "I said, okay, or well, what can I support?" And it was the next game I went to was early '90s, so it was like you know a year later, and I went to Tottenham and. It was it Gaza just started playing, I think. And that was my earliest memories of Spurs was Gaza, um, Lineker. And it's not a bad time to pick up the reins. In exactly, the exactly. And we didn't, well, we won the World, uh, well, World Cup, fucking hell. Uh, the FA Cup against Forest 2-1. Uh, yeah, it was 2-1. We beat Arsenal 3-1 in the semi-finals with that amazing free kick. And um, yeah, I just supported them ever since. But obviously, looking back now, you could have gone through the Invincibles and, you know, the amazing Arsenal, Arsene Wenger. And, and you know, I had to go f through senior school supporting Tottenham when Arsenal just won absolutely everything. And that's why I got a soft spot for Man United because you, you couldn't really support, like, you know, it was, it was Man U, basically, or Arsenal. And, um, you know, we had... You say, so Man United took your pain away? Yeah, yeah, it was like, I, I have a soft spot for them now because it was like... I always wanted them to beat Arsenal and, and, and win the league because I knew Tottenham were never in for a shout. We were always mid-table. Um, but I had a season ticket. Well, I still have a season ticket. Me and my brother had season tickets uh, for a long time now, over, oh my God, 30-odd years. Uh, yeah. first, I mean, we still haven't really won anything. <laughs> it's, it's painful. It builds, it, it, listen, it builds, it builds, it builds character. Yeah. I think like, it's, it's good is for it, boxing. Has it, hard, it hardened you in your business life? Yeah, because it's good for boxing because, like, you know, the moment you think you're winning, you're losing the, the next day, so the next fight. So it's, it's like, 
take the good times with the bad, rough with the smooth. It's uh, I, I say to my kids, I say like, because my actually, my, I've got two girls, and one's eleven, and she, um, she loves Tottenham, so she's getting really into it. I'm like, do you know what you're doing? Like, this, this is not good. You're signing yourself up for this a is not good. disappointment. And I'm not, you know. <laughs> get it if she's like yeah man city harland harland you know um but no she's tottenham and i'm like yeah you're gonna build character out of this i'll tell you that i rate it you gotta pick or you got not even pick you get given who your dad supports and that's that that's how it goes for yeah me. yeah yeah i i get that no i get that i get it. that i think i think again i'm sorry for any sort of you know sexist or uh, not sexist and I, I'm sorry if this comes across sexist but it's my two little girls so I'm not going to be that forceful with if you were my son son you'd be supporting Tottenham Oscar Thank 100% percent, yeah but with my girls I'm like oh, you know yeah, it's all right you know do what you want <laughs> daddy's girls right it's like you know if my mum was if, if my mum oh my god if my wife was a hardcore Tottenham fan then they'd be sporting uh, yeah 100% disciplinarian I, I'm not <laughs> I don't know if you remember this but we so obviously I support Chelsea we played you lot in the League Cup and that was when Antonio Conte was your manager we won the first leg 2-0 at our place in League Cup semi-final second leg 1-0 at your place we was going mental after when Tuchel come over to the away fans and I look at my phone and it says Nissa Sauerland and you're you go look up you're in a box above yeah. you Kala and Linus Adolfio. Linus Adolfio was... And you're good. looking at me going, fuck off. Fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that was, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. boys, look, the Sowlands are up late. That's you so funny. Yeah, I do remember that. How, what a ra- I wish I'd thrown something at you at the time. Um, yeah, like, I think I people were throwing stuff at me. I can't Yeah, they? yeah. Well, did you win, though? Yeah, yeah. You yeah, won, we won, we won 1-0 and then 3-0 on aggregate. 3 nil on aggregate. Okay, yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, I did. Again, like, so did you have to? You know what? It's like you remember the victories, yeah. You don't like because there's so few the special victories. Um, you don't really uh, remember the losses anymore because there's so many. <laughs> but um, we're playing great football and very exciting to watch. I don't know. I feel like Tottenham's taking a little bit of a downturn. Oh yeah, I yeah, know we have, but we're playing exciting football. True. And every game is uh, very. It was very exciting. But would last you rather? Year, but... I, would you rather have a really boring football team that win one nil and win the league? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, right, boxing, Newcastle. I'll start by asking this question. Harlem Eubank is from the other end of the country. Um, I presume we're up here because you've got some really elite Newcastle prospects. Would that be fair to say? Um, e- yes, 100%. I, you know, the story goes that we, w- we wanted to obviously do Brighton with, with Harlem. Um, Brighton, where we wanted to go, is it's, it's always booked up. It's very hard to get in there. Um, and we thought, well, you know, Bolton got postponed. We said, let's let's go to Newcastle. Um, we've got Dan Toward from up here who, you know, I've, I've never been so excited about a prospect. Um, you know, he, and, and, and he's popular already. He's sold over 300 tickets on his own. Uh, we sold out the arena tomorrow night. Um, you know, so we'll have... 15, 1,600 people in there in a time where it's, it's you know, it's it's quite hard to sell tickets, especially run, running up to Christmas. Um, and, you know, it's it's Harlem at a new weight. Um, and there's not, not that much more to say. that There was an arena available for Harlem. But also we are, we're going to go back to, 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 to Brighton very early next year. Yeah. What's the plan with Harlem also over the next 18 months to, to two years? Because... Obviously, there was that gap that he wouldn't have wanted. There was some real momentum going, and then obviously it's halted a little bit. Um, would you say it's this? I know you kind of can't go too far in advance because you need to win the fight. <coughs> but would you say it's tomorrow night, perhaps one in Brighton, and then you're looking for the biggest fight possible, be it a domestic fight, something at world level? Would that be a fair assessment? I, I think you knocked the nail in the head. I, I, I would I would also say that look, you know, if something bigger comes up in the in the time being, you know, of course we'd be open to that. It's not that Harlem is is worried about fighting Azim or, or or anyone. It's just he he needs to get on with his career. He can't be waiting around for people. Uh, he's a, he's he's hitting his prime right now. 
This is he's got two three years where he's he's at his maximum money making cap- capability. Yeah, um, and that's my job is to maneuver him into the right fights um, on the right terms, and also not have to wait and play the B side because I think he deserves to be the A side as well, or at least the equal side. Yeah. I know the Conor Ben fight was one that people were throwing at him a lot, especially when we come to Wasserman HQ and you announced you'd sign a longer, kind of a multi-fight extension. Um, I know Eddie has said today, actually, <coughs> that Chris Eubank Jr. and Conor Ben talks are reopening. Um, but Harlem Eubank and Conor Ben is a big fight. I know Harlem's expressed a real interest in it. Would you still put that as one right at the top of the hit list? I think that fight makes a lot of sense. Um, I think that, you know, obviously the junior and uh, Conor Ben fight has been talked a lot about. We obviously made that fight and it obviously fell through for, you know, uh, reasons. Um, but, you know, that, that I think Harlem against Conor Ben now, welterweight, it makes a lot of sense. He's at that weight class now. Does make a lot of sense. Um, let's see where they get to with uh, Eubank and uh, Conor. Are you sick? Of uh, as in junior, are you sick of listening to everything surrounding that because of your involvement with it? Like, I feel like, as a fan and knowing both Connor and Chris, I need to see the fight because there's been a saga. Time has passed by. There's been words exchanged. There's still obviously the bad blood. There's the family history. I feel like I need to see it, but because of everything that come with it and the problems it caused the first time round, do you still feel like you need to see it, or do you sit from an angle where you're like I'm a little bit sick of? Um, Conor Ben Chris Eubank Jr. Of course, look, as a fan, you want to see that fight happen. Um, I just hope that they don't overvalue themselves. Um, they should get their fair pay, obviously. But, you know, so so often fights aren't made because of unrealistic expectations from fighters, you know. Um, and I just, I just hope that they both come to the table, you know, and 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 get that fight made and put egos out of the room. Obviously, for us, it was a, 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 not, I don't think we've made any secrets of it, but it was an absolute disaster. Yeah, cancelling a fight in fight week is, you know, it was uh, it was not good. Was that the most difficult thing you've had to deal with in your time in boxing? No, 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 not, not, not that even. That made it sound like it wasn't even close. No, it wasn't even close. I, I think, I think, look, from an I think, I think listen, I, I think when someone's he- like, you know, if you have someone and they, you know, injury is a lot like worse than anything. And, and, and if you have to deal with that, um, it's that, that for me is like money can, you know, come, come another day, you know. But in on big shows can come another day. But if a fighter, you know, if, if you're involved in a fight where someone's injured, that that for me took a lot to get over. Um, you know, and and, and I, I, that that's probably the hardest thing you've, I've I've had to deal with. And I imagine it would be anyone involved in the sport that that would be the hardest thing to deal with. Yeah. yeah. Do you know I actually forgot circumstances like that, um, and I guess no matter how many times something like that happens, and no matter how many things you've been through, even if you might become hardened to it in a sense, um, things like that will always be, no. always kind of hit home. No, no, listen, nothing's worth more than your health, you know, and we love watching it, we love the trash talk, but at the same time, you know, <laughs> that just makes it just not worth Boxing it. isn't the, it's not the be on end all, no, is it? No, nothing Which is, is easy to forget when you're doing nothing everything ca- around Exactly, boxing. exactly. And uh, it's, um, yeah, no, I, you know, it, I had I had I had it happen to me twice in 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 quick quickish succession, you know. Uh, getting out. Was that the dogs barking at home? Yeah, I don't know what that was. <laughs> um, yeah, had it happen to me in quick succession, you know, with uh, uh, Eddie Gooknesh, uh and then I was in his changing room straight after George fought him, and obviously I was involved with Eddie early on in his career, and then George was promoted by his Groves. And, uh, you know, basically collapsed in the changing room when I was there. It was awful. And, and, then, um, and then Eric Scoglin as well, um, about six months, I think, later. So it was like in quick succession. And then I was like, 
I think I was like, gee, you go to the boxing after that and you're just watching. If anyone lays a glove on someone, you're like, stop the fight. <laughs> it's like, you, you need to get used to it again. Um, but that was, yeah, that was, um, that was pretty hard to watch. And, you know, it's, uh, it's yeah, 100%, that's the hardest thing, I think. Yeah, yeah I remember them too. It does feel like quite a while ago now, but I remember them too. I remember seeing actually Eric Sogland at York Hall couple of years after and I'm having a good chat with him really really nice oh he's bloke. he's he's, really nice he's recovered really well yeah. um and you know obviously he wasn't able to fight ever again and it's a shame because he did a, he had a really good fight with Callum Smith and then he was going to fight Rocky Fielding so he, he went back to sparring first spar back um he ended up collapsing in in, in his spar um so yeah it was, it was awful Awful, yeah. Went out straight away. I was out, out, saw him. It's, I, I, yeah, it was not a nice sort of thing to be, you know, for, for him and his family are such lovely people. It was just not nice to see. Yeah, yeah, more to life than boxing, as I was yeah. saying. Um, right, lifting the mood up a little bit. Yeah, I think we've got to. Yeah. But, um, chaos at the Tommy Fury Darren Till press conference. Um, we expected it. I guess. Uh, yeah, putting, I, I, putting John I think, Fury I, I on the stage. Sorry, but I think I think we definitely expected it. Could I say it? that putting John Fury on the stage is like, in a minor sense, inciting a little bit of trouble? Yeah, but he was really well behaved, and so was Tommy. Uh, and then uh, Darren, uh, sort of, you know, he went off off on one, um, and I think uh, I'm, I'm I'm really excited by that fight. Because uh, Darren can fight, he can box as well. Tommy can box. So it'll be a, you know, it'll be a, it'll be a, you know, it'll be a very high level, high level misfits fight. Yeah. Was you wary about having Big John up on the stage again? I know the decision doesn't lie with you, but was you wary because of things that have happened before? Uh, I mean, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. But you know, what, what am I going to do? Say no. <laughs> you know, he, 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 he wanted to be up there. Um, it adds to the event. People love him. Um, people enjoy his, it, it, you know, so I, I, I get on very well with John. I get on very well with Tommy. Um, so, I, you know, it's, look, it's, uh, you know, it's a show. A bit of a show. Well, I guess it would be fair to say that what we saw the other day increased interest tenfold. Yeah, although, I, it was, I, although it was already, I think a it was fight. It, it was a weird one because we managed to keep it. There was no rumours of it anywhere, right? So, which is very rare, very very rare, right? To to do a deal because it didn't take. It wasn't an easy deal to do. Um, and no one, there was not a murmur of it in the press, and it just came out, and everyone was like, "Oh, what the fuck is going on here?" Actually, hmm, that's not bad. <laughs> Do you know, I, I got sent the fight poster about four or five days before the press conference, and I was genuinely shocked. Why did you get sent the film? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that. No, 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 you shouldn't have said that. I'm gonna I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to check your phone after this. I got sent the fight poster. Like a bit of Nicorette spray. <laughs> Trying to quit the Try cigars. Quit. How's quitting the cigars going? Uh, not very well. <laughs> so I'm that, now I'm addicted to a Nicorette spray and cigars. No, it's actually for the snooze. Well, you oh, do right. the snooze, don't I you? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, don't do the snooze. It's one thing I've never Those understood. Those nicotine patterns, no, no, no. Yeah. They're so addictive. So it's not, it's no good. No, no good. No. Cigars are better. Just normal pack. We'll get on them tonight, just don't normal, worry. Just normal pack of cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I said to you, I said it's retro. It's almost retro. It's, it's old school. Like, it's old school. I, was, I like, saw you guys, I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy I'm not smoking vapes. <laughs> <laughs> it is just... Yeah, it is a bit retro, isn't it? Now everyone's on like watermelon, strawberry, yeah, big I, puffing devices, and whatnot. I, 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 I don't know what to make of that. That's a bit of a worry as well. Yeah. I mean, what is it, what's in that? The sugar like crystallizing on your lungs. Can't Smoking be a, battery acid. Yeah, it cannot be a good thing. Can't but then it. again, I've just sprayed a bit of nicotine in my mouth. I was going to say we shouldn't sit here like health gurus, really, when yeah. we're talking about smoking for the last yeah, yeah. minute or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, talking about the run up to the end of the year, so we got obviously. Uh, this Friday night show in Newcastle and then next for you will you be going to Riyadh I know obviously you've got Lee McGregor on the I've got uh, yeah I've got, we've got uh, Qatar next week yeah Qatar 
then got Lee Mag- uh, Lee McGregor. Uh, I've got Lee McGregor, but before that, I have Sultan Zorbeck yep. in a, in quite a tasty fight. December um, that should be announced soon. Um, if it hasn't been announced today, but um, and then we've got Lee, yeah, Lee McGregor, Isaac. A in, fight is long overdue. Yeah, fucking hell. It's just like Connor, where, where, ben, Connor where, ben Eubank. <laughs> <laughs> when, when was that fight first put together? It feels like it was a long time ago. It feels like it's a long time ago, yeah. yeah. Like, literally, years. <laughs> 15 months? I don't know. I mean, it's a brilliant fight. Um, it's a great fight. It's a wh- good fight. What did you make of, i just say, the criticism on the whole? Because I know the criticism was... I think there was quite a bit of criticism about the Fury Usyk undercard. I know there's a lot of UK interest, so I looked at it and thought it was quite a nice, solid card. Um, I know I, from I just a US everyone's spoiled. standpoint... Everyone's spoiled. You think? Yeah. Yeah, everyone's spoiled. That, that's the thing. It's like, if that was in the UK, you'd be like, oh, that's brilliant, yeah. That's, honestly, that's a brilliant card. But like, we're spoiled. We're spoiled. I mean, from last year, what was it? Last Christmas, same date. Fury, Usyk. Who else is on the card? Bivol, Linden. So the... December, last December. December last year was the... It wasn't Fury Usyk. It was oh, the no. Joshua Wallen. You know, it was Josh- Wilder Parker. No, it was Josh... Yeah, jo- yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, to God. be fair, in all fairness, comparing the two cards, that's probably where... Exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. But then Bradis uh, Opataya. Yeah. That was on the last one. Uh, who else was on there? Uh, Kikachi. Cordina. Cordina. Yeah. And a few other really good fights. So, yeah, it's not as good as that one, but it's still very good. Yeah. yeah? So, it's like, come on. Like, guys, let's not get too spot. There's like three three cards on that one card. Yeah. Um, that, that is, look, that is a kind of sometimes, you know, these, these Saudi cards are almost too good. Because a lot of these fights should be happening in the UK on as main events. Yeah? I was going to say, you take every undercard fight from yeah. that Fury Usyk bill, and they are main events. Of course. The main events. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. What you, uh, who's Dave Allen's got? Etoma. Dave Allen, Johnny Fisher. Oh, Johnny Fisher. Sells out the copper box. That sells out the copper box. That's a DAZN night. Yeah? Uh, Lee McGregor, Isaac Lowe. I was going to do that on Channel 5. Uh, uh, Dennis who's McCann, t- Peter McGrail. <laughs> Brilliant fight for Liverpool. Liverpool, would you do? Yeah, yeah. Who, who else is there? There's Moses Atom- is a town with Dempsey McKean. That could be his first. That would be his first main event. Atoma's first main event. That's that's that's, that's sellable. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a it's a good yeah, card. It's a good card. I'm, I'm, I, I listen. Take my money. I'm buying it. <laughs> but I'm buying it for the main event. Yeah. Wouldn't buy it. You know what I mean? And and I'll watch everything on it. But that's what a that's what a pay per view should really be, right? Not like four loaded fights, which are kind of pay per view. Yeah. How does the Lee McGregor fight play out? Bit of bad blood between the two. Yeah, yeah, I think so. He, I is think it fair so. to say that if Lee McGregor doesn't win this, there's some conversations to be had? I think I think, it all, I think it's the more pressures on Lee, hundred percent. You know, um, he maybe hasn't realised his absolute potential yet. Um, and I think every time Isaac's tried, he's come up quite short. Um, so yeah, I think I think yeah, you're right. I think the pressure's hundred percent on Lee, hundred percent. I'll just take a sip. And who's the pressure on in the rematch in the big one? Tyson, I guess, or Usyk to replicate what was a fantastic performance. I'd, I'd say both of them have a huge amounts of pressure. I think for the UK, it's so important for Tyson to win. Because where does boxing go? Where are the stars if Tyson loses? AJ lost, Tyson lost. I guess, would, would it not be, and I know this is kind of foresight, but if we're to say that Tyson Fury does lose to Alexander Usyk, yeah. I guess, is it not our chance for the next crop to come through? I mean, Daniel Dubois just knocked Anthony Joshua out of Wembley Stadium. 100%. Okay, he's not the market machine that Anthony Joshua is, but I guess at some point, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury won't no, be. No, I, I think... I, I I really like Daniel Dubois. I see him. He's kind of a Bruno character, isn't he? What Harry? You know. <laughs> I, 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 but we've been spoiled by AJ and Fury. I think for a few years now. Um, and yeah, I agree. It's it's a chance for the next crop to come through. But I don't think anyone's uh, 
would you say ripe? Or the, you know what I mean? Like yeah, ripe, it's, yeah, yeah. It's not. You haven't it's got perhaps, that. It's perhaps for two years. You time. haven't got that guy where you go. Okay, let's put the O2. Let's book anti Joshua Tyson Fury. It doesn't matter on the opponent. It'll sell out. No one, no one can do that. I don't think. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think now. Like yeah. KSI. KSI can. It's true. It's true. That is something that Kala said to me. Actually, he <coughs> said he was like, when it comes to selling out arenas. Tommy Fury, Darren Till will sell out the co-op. KSI will sell out any arena. But if you haven't got Anthony Joshua or Tyson Fury or perhaps Conor Ben and Chris Eubank together, yeah. selling out arenas it's now hard is, moment, is difficult. Yeah. yeah, 100%. Listen, Johnny Fish is doing very well. You know, sell three, 4,000 tickets, but it's not 20,000 yet. Uh, I'm sure they'll all get there and it's nothing. It's not, I'm just, you know... So it's important that Tyson Fury wins, essentially, for British boxing. 100%. On the 21st. 100%. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Do you expect him to win? But you're right. Maybe someone comes through. I, I, I don't know. I, I can't really... But what is that event that will spring them into that sort of pay-per-view star? Well, what will it be? Uh, because obviously Dubai's won the world title. Um... He needs a fight that's going to, I mean, knocking out AJ in front of 80, 90,000 people, that should really do it, shouldn't it? So, yeah, maybe it is Dubois. Yeah. Maybe it is. Maybe, maybe that's the one. Um, I don't know. I, you know, it's, it's, I don't have a crystal ball, but you can only sort of, you know, speak around it, speak about it, and, and try and work out for yourself. I, You know, there, there'll be some surprises coming through as well. Josh Kelly, you know. Um, still don't get their scorecards. We're still trying to work them out. Um, uh, you know, there's obviously Connor Ben, Eubank Jr. Um, We've always been all right in this country, haven't we? We've always done all right. Yeah. There'll always be your yeah. fighters there to be considered. Ben, ben, I mean, look, Ben Whitaker was my next guy, you know? Um, he was, he was, you know, looking good and, you know, getting loads of traction. Adam Azim, um, you know, not the not the finished article, but him against Harlem, who, whoever wins that is going to be a big star. Yeah, but it just needs that one fight, that one fight to sort of capture the the nation's uh, enthusiasm for that person. So whoever wins, they, that you know, they're the they're they're the they're the the, the A side, the pay per view star. Yeah, just one on Tyson Usyk before we go on to something else. Um, what sort of fight are you expecting? Because I feel like people might have slightly forgotten how close the first fight actually was. Well, I think if you saw what happened, and that was Fury got his rhythm, he got into his flow, and then I think Usyk started moving the other side and sort of took his uppercut away from him. And that... That sort of that that reversed the whole fight. Um, I, I I it was it, you know it was it was it was Tyson was just looking beautiful. He was boxing amazing. Nothing could stop him. Then suddenly, just such simple thing, switch the other way, start walking, you know, and and it worked. And it worked. Um, I think this time he might come out and try and blast him out. I've heard he's put on a bit of meat. You know why not? You're a big guy. Uh, put 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 your weight on him. Yeah, well, that's what people said with Anthony Joshua. Was it? I know it's easier said than done, but people said, yeah. When you look at the size, yeah. surely that's a guy you should be yeah. putting your weight on and trying to dominate. More body shots, yeah. but then when you're six foot, whatever, and trying to hit keys to the body, it's quite hard. Yeah, like a smaller guy, and you leave yourself open when you're doing that, especially to someone like Usyk, because I think Dubois showed that uh, Usyk's body is you know whether it's on the belt it's above the belt it, the ref takes the belt or not accepts the belt it's still well, that region it wasn't it's bollocks was it yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was you know like lower belly whatever you want to call it yeah. but it was still a good shot and it hurt him um that's why i was confused with Baturbief as well and i saw it with linden when he was fighting bivol and it was you know obviously Fivol was a great fighter, but when Lyndon hit him in the belly, I think in the eighth round, 
you could see Bivol <sighs> suck up. And I was surprised. Every time Baturbiev, which I think was twice, hit into the body, straight away the hands come down. And you're just like, why not? Why are you not hitting him there more? It's like everyone goes for the big highlight knockout punch. But that's not going to come. If that's not coming, go down to the body, go back up, go back down. You, you know, it's, it's very simple. I'm not, not, not reinventing the wheel here. But a lot of people don't get like, like getting punched in the stomach. <coughs> You're saying it's a bit of an old school move now, the body shot? No, I just, yeah. I think people try and go for the highlight reel knockout too often. Uh, and, and, and like, you know, having boxed at a very fucking low level, I know myself, I can take shots to the head, hit me to the body, I'm down. <laughs> I hate it. Awful, awful. Doesn't matter how many setups you do. You, you, There's some oh. tips for the next person who's in a street fight. Oh, no, just and don't. I just I run. Head downstairs. I just run, mate. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a trained track athlete. <laughs> no, I do like it, a body shot. It's um, hopefully not a dying art because it is one of the best punches. Oh, um, Ricky Hatton. Was it Castillo? <laughs> no, who did he fight? Castillo or Corrales? Sort of jab, bang, to the left, left hook to the, to, to the liver. Oh, thing of beauty oh. um, one more thing I want to end on Frank Warren and Queensbury to DAZN um, Frank and Eddie on the same platform I know it's I guess old news now um, but do you still find it weird having not even crossed paths with each other slating each other for years on years on years that Frank and Eddie are now best pals I, do you know what I don't, I don't find anything weird in boxing anymore well though do I yeah not, not those that, no, I don't think so I think it makes sense. I think it makes really good sense. And I think it means, you know, some of the big fights can be made now. And there's no excuses. There's no hiding from either promoter. Like, oh, well, it's a different network. We can't make that fight. Well, no, 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 no. You're on the same network now. Uh, that so is true. Off. No one can hide. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Not that they have been, in all fairness, putting their guys in and against each other. Um, oh, no. Yeah, but that's with the Saudis. Are but you, before you, that, I mean. Yeah. Are you expecting there to be a point in time where the majority of the large UK promotional outfits are stationed on, on one platform. And would that work as well? Or do we need different broadcasters? Do we need a Sky TNT, the zone? I think we need as much boxing as we can get. On the uh, same platform? No. Different I, broadcasters? I, 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 think, I think different broadcasters are very important. Um, I think otherwise, you know, well, <laughs> you, you don't want a monopoly, do you? Um, and... I think also it's it's. I just want more boxing. I want as much boxing as you can get. I think the zone's brilliant. It it, you know, whenever you turn on a Saturday night, you got a fight, you know, and, and that, that's great. And if you like, you got your PF uh, was it PFL, PFL there? Yeah. I, I really I've gotten really into MMA. Have you? Yeah, I like it. I, I enjoy it. Again, I watched that with my eleven year old. She loves that. Um, so I, I yeah. Because, you know, I do the jiu-jitsu now a bit. So I kind of I enjoy it when they go on. I never liked it when they went on the ground before. But now if you sort of know what they're doing, you know, when they're, you know, whoever gets on top first sort of, you know, and then you've got the jiu-jitsu guy who can sort of flip you over and take your leg and, you know, ankle lock you or whatever it's called. It's like I, I quite enjoy that. But, you know, on... on I think the zone's done an amazing job. I just think there's too much boxing out there to have on one one station. I think it's good to have competition uh, in all walks of life. You know, it's like can you imagine there's only one supermarket. But it's only one yeah. price for this, one price for that. Um, well, I guess you, you you guys play a different role in having free to air boxing. Yeah. So it's a different role too. I know sometimes we might presume like a Sky and TNT comes across as free boxing because we've got it because we want the football and then the boxing's there. Yeah. But yours is free to air boxing. So you play a real important role yeah. in that kind of system that you're talking about. Yeah. Look, I love working with Channel 5. You know, we've got we've got next year done. We're already planning it. Um, and we're going to have some bigger fights on there. We've made that possible. Um and you know the viewing figures aren't to be argued with. Yeah, they're they're unbelievable. You know, one and a half, two million people sometimes tuning in. Um, 
And the beauty is, is like, you know, we do the main event, but we also get a, like a four or a six rounder like we've done with Tom Welland and Dan Howard, which means that they're actually being watched by those people, um, you know, by a million odd people tuning in just for four rounders. Like, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you don't get that amount of uh, uh, exposure at such a young age normally. Yeah, shout out Tom Welland, one of our boys. Tom, Tom is, yeah, Tom is, Tom's he's wicked, isn't he? Yeah, Tom. He walks with that swagger and confidence. Oh, as well mate, for a young he's, age. he's, he's, yeah, he's good. The Wellard Army. Yeah. That's why I call him Wellard Welland. Yeah. Wellard Welland. Not I'm Atomic Tom, him. as he calls himself. I'm disappointed when he came out of that. Would you? Ugh. Need to sack the Welland. Wellard team. Army. Wellard. Wellard Army. Mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Um, yeah. He's into the YouTuber stuff as well, which is good. Like you know, you tie it in with Salt Pappy. He's uh, you know he's half Filipino, so he's like he's got his Filipino crew of Salt Pappy. You know, and and uh, um, Jay Chris and small part Spartan Jay, who's also another influencer, um, and they all fight. And uh, they got actually they got quite a good little podcast going. I can't, I can't have you seen it? I can't remember the name of I've it. I've seen clips on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah from, it's, it's got. Jay, I've watched yeah. one of them. It's funny. It's good. It's good. It's good. Are you it's a podcast good. man? Do you, would you? Yeah, I like, like podcasts. podcasts on on the train, yeah. traveling, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Joe Rogan, hundred yeah. um, percent. I like Joe Joe Rogan. I like the, what's the doctor fella called? It's Huberman, Huberman, Huberman. Um, I think he's quite good. I don't really understand most of what he says, but I can sort of just you be make you feel clever. You'll be at a dinner and you come out with something absolutely like out of this world, and you don't understand what it means, but it's very impressive. It's better than going, oh yeah, yeah, go down to the body and then to the head. That <laughs> beats that, you know. Um, but it's uh, no, I love podcasts. I think they're brilliant, especially like if you're doing a. Tra- I, think train. We need, I think we need a Salomon Brothers podcast. Oh, I'd just be him talking. Talking at you. <laughs> it beats him talking at me. Oh, fucking hell. No, no. I think people want to hear the stories of the past, the partying days, uh, the yeah, young yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had a lot of party days. Ibiza. Oh, I love Ibiza. I don't, I, listen, I've got to be honest. Like, Ibiza's changed, man. It's changed. See, I'm, I'm a modern See, two, Ibiza Early, to, early so. 2000s, closing parties, space, great music. Oh, that makes me jealous. Great music. That makes me jealous. One thing I will say, actually, is you mentioned uh, Tom Welland's little crew and some of the Misfits influencers guys. And then you were saying, of course, that you're doing bits of jujitsu and that. What's the figure to get Nissa Sauerland in the ring? I, 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 I've just had my nose sorted. <laughs> Do you like Carl Froch? Yeah, <laughs> I've just, uh, honestly, you can't get in, the in ring. September, right, because I couldn't breathe because I've broken it so badly. Um, I can actually breathe now. But what are we talking about ring-wise? Let's, 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 um, let's get some rules here. MMA? Or are we talking... Well, you've been doing the jiu-jitsu, but you're a boxing man at heart. So yeah, yeah. Well, I've done boxing. some of those. I've done some of those white collars, like, you know. I've done How long ago was the Five of them collar? I've done, I think. Five. Have you? Yeah. When were they? I used to sell massive tickets. Like, first fight I did, yeah, I was fighting like an Oxford University guy who'd had fought, you know, they had actually have quite a decent boxing program there. And he had 40 amateur fights or something. And um, get in and have the biggest tear up of my life. Nose pop, bl- broken. Um, go the distance, I get a draw. And um, it's when I say like that, it was actually like a fucking tear up. Yeah, this kid was good. He was just coming at me. Was a draw a fair result? I felt like I lost, but maybe because I broke my nose. My brother yeah. reckons I drew. I, was, I think it was a bit of a German draw. Um, <laughs> and then, German so draw. because I'd sold 350, 400 tickets, the next fight I had was against a guy who had literally, I swear, he'd like been like in the pub on Kilburn I Road like a few hours earlier they just dragged him out and gone come on have a fight and the problem was this guy wasn't very good at all I realised then that I'm feather fisted I was like hitting him you ain't got the knockout power <laughs> you know those dreams where you punch someone and punch someone and they don't go down <laughs> this is what it was like um, I was like oh, I don't have knockout power but I won and then I, I did about three more I think I think they're on YouTube somewhere I'll find it for you I'll oh, find right. it for you 
Everyone's now furiously searching. This is how all of them Yeah, a, l- a few of them disappeared. Because remember Eric Guy, uh, God rest yeah, his yeah, soul. Yeah. I do. He, he's got them on tape. Um, and they got taken off YouTube. Uh, I've been trying to get contact yeah. with him, but... Eric Guy, God bless. Yeah, that is a bit of a... Yeah, he used to film all the fights. Yeah. Um, he used Mad. to film some of my dad's old stuff that he had in, in the UK. So, yeah. I, you know, they're, they're without people like that, the boxing industry is dead. Um, and he's had such a brilliant archive. Wow, he had me in it. That's and then anyway, anyway, I, I was a really good ticket seller. So then I just got kind of... The next one, the next few are a bit harder. Let's put it that way. Um, but I still won. Um, but it was, I, I loved what, it. What was the, I loved re- it. What was the like reason for, I don't want to say hanging the gloves up and make out you were uh, 40 fights deep, but what was the reason just, for stopping? I just, yeah, just kind of liked to party a bit too much. <laughs> and um, I would, Believable. Yeah, and then uh, the best thing about those nights was me getting in the ring. I love the, putting on the tune to get into the ring too. What was the ring walk song? Uh, Enzo Mac, uh, I Won't Back Down, you know, Enzo Macanelli's song. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I won't back down. And then, and then I saw him get knocked out by David Hay. And I was like, oh, I can't come into that song ever again. So then I came in, I think it was the Ramones or The Clash, some punk music. <coughs> um, uh, so yeah, but then, then I used to have after parties and they were like notorious, they were brilliant. I, and uh, you, you, it was weird how many ex-girlfriends would turn up just to see me get absolutely bad. Really? Like that, literally, they turned up for that. So there was like one table of just yeah. ex-girlfriends. Yeah, I think you had a few new ones, on few new ones in know. the crowd as well. <laughs> <laughs> a few new ones with their Nissa Sound yeah. signs. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, Nissa, what a pleasure. Appreciate your time, Either. mate. Um, just to end, what does a Thursday night in Newcastle look like for you? Oh, me and you. Hitting the tune, getting some cigars. I would. I don't know. What do you want to do? I think a cigar sounds good. Yeah, could do that. Not in this this weird empty room, but yeah, hundred percent. Miss you're a legend. Geezer. Appreciate you, mate. Ah. Oh.